Okay, welcome everybody to Matters of the Heart. I am Gabriel Gonzalez, a heart intelligence coach, teacher, and trainer that specializes in matters of the heart. I'm being a little bit redundant here this morning or this afternoon. Morning for you guys in the US. Um, my biggest passion in life is helping people create relationships, lifestyles, and careers that they absolutely love. And I do this by showing you how to access your inner source of love, wisdom, power that is available to you when you start connecting with your emotional, intuitive, energetic, and spiritual heart. Through individual and group coaching programs, online courses, and live seminars, I teach a wholehearted or heart center approach to personal development, spiritual development, emotional mastery, and conscious relationship building. Basically, I'm here to help give birth to the most loving, amazing, joyful, wise, and powerful version of you. You can find out more about me and the work that I've been called to do in this world by visiting my website, heartintelligencecoach.com. There, you'll be able to book a session with me and find out more about my upcoming seminars around the world. Today, in Matters of the Heart, we're going to be talking about why relationships end and 12 things you can do about it. As a reminder, for those of you who are listening to this broadcast live, at any time, you could type in your question in the Q&A session uh, here in, uh, in the, at the bottom of somewhere of your screen, okay, to be sure that I get to those questions before the end of our, of our program. But before we get started, let's go ahead and take a few moments to center ourselves in our hearts. And we're going to do this by placing a hand over the middle of our chest as we begin to breathe slowly, deeply, evenly. As a way to get really present together and begin to open our hearts, our minds, and our consciousness to new ideas, to insights, to answers um, that will be revealed to you during today's broadcast. I know many of you uh, come to the sessions because you have a yearning in, in your soul and your heart. Perhaps there's a relationship you're struggling with. It might be the relationship with yourself, an aspect of yourself that you don't like. Or perhaps it's a relationship that recently came to an end or appears to be coming to an end. So this is an opportunity to get very present together in our bodies by breathing in and out of the heart and begin to appreciate something about ourselves. It doesn't matter what it is. Just maybe appreciate the fact that you have a roof over your head, that you have an internet connection through which you can listen to this broadcast. But whatever it is, take a moment to just to appreciate something as you listen to the following words. And allow these words to land deeply into your heart and unify your heart and your mind and your soul. As we take a moment to give thanks Dear Father and Mother God, for this breath, for this body, for the beating of our own hearts right now, the fact that we're alive. With each breath that we take, we give thanks for the experience of being human, though it may be painful at times. We give thanks for the opportunity to, to be in relationship with people who have given them and given us their love, their nurturing, their support, and to have been able to do the same for others. We give thanks that it is the power of God's love through and by means of our hearts and our actions that heals not only our relationship with ourselves and our relationship with the world, but also our relationship with others. We rest in the awareness that we are now opening our hearts, our minds, and souls to be aware and to be receptive to new insights, new creative solutions to current problems or challenges that we are facing in our relationships with a deep knowing that right here and right now, there are no mistakes happening anywhere in our lives. That everything that appears to be either falling apart in our relationship or um, people who may appear to be distancing themselves from us. This is, all, this is all for our learning and for our growth. 
for everything is an invitation for us to begin to express more of the qualities of the heart, the virtues of the heart. Everything is an opportunity to become more loving, more forgiven, more humble, more understanding, more compassionate. To begin to honor that there is an greater intelligence of life that we access through and by means of our hearts that is seeking to express and to give more love and that it is ultimately love that can heal and restore any relationship. It is ultimately the power of love that can create miracles in our lives. For this awareness, we give thanks and we let it be. And so it is. Hmm. All right. How did that feel? Don't know about you, but that certainly felt very, very good to me. Okay, so we are focusing today on the topic of relationships. Well, if you notice, as you continue to come back here week after week, that matters of the heart will always be matters of relationship. Right? Relationships, you can think of relationships, and that is the invitation that I'm going to extend out to you, that you begin to shift your awareness and, and uh, begin to see relationships as lessons and schools that we signed up, assignments that we signed up with specific people for the purpose of learning lessons. Our topic today is why relationships end and 12 things that you can do about it. So if you've been struggling with a particular relationship that appears to be coming to an end, um, if you feel helpless, like somebody maybe is pulling away or running away, or maybe you're the one that is running away from a relationship that appears to no longer um, feel good to you for whatever reason, all right? I want, to, I want you to open up to the possibility that today, during this session, during this broadcast, you're going to begin to see yourself, the other person, and the situation from a completely different angle. And I would say that angle is from the eyes of love, from the perspective of your heart. Before we actually, or actually answer the question, why relationships end, right? Which is probably what you're wanting to find out more about. And um, how about if, before we even get there, we talk about why relationships start, right? If we want to start, if we want to find out why something's coming to an end, it's probably a very good idea to, to first ask ourselves the question, why did something start in the first place? When you think back about your most recent relationships or a particular relationship that you have right now in your life that you're struggling with, and you ask yourself the question, why did this relationship start? Why did I decide to start this relationship? Because here's the thing. At some level, this relationship is not something that happened to you, right? Relationship done really just happened. At some level, we choose. We choose. We choose to pick up the phone, show up for that date, send that email, send that message, whatever it is that we do, and we continue uh, to engage in this dance. All right. When you think about these relationships, especially the ones that you might be struggling with right now, what was it about that person that drew you towards them to the point that at some level you said, this is someone I want to get to know. This is someone that I want to hang out with. This is someone that I want to give my time, my energy, my love, my support. What was it about them? Well, you may notice that the main reason we are here in this planet is to relate. We as human beings, we are relational beings. We exist in relationship. Relationships in essence are a mirror to us. It's how we grow. It's how we learn. You think about who you are, the person that you are right now, today, is because you have been in constant relationship from your primary caretakers to your siblings and, and people around you who somehow love, nurture, supported you, picked on you, teased you, uh, bullied you, may have abused you, hurt you, broken your heart. But nonetheless, your journey of life has been one 
of being in constant relationship. Relationship is that how we experience ourselves, is how we exist, right? And so it's important to remember that relationships is how we do life, is how we experience life. Otherwise, life would be certainly very, very, very boring, and you would not exist. You know, the, 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 um, the meaning of the word to exist means to stand out. So the only way I can really stand out, stand out is by having another being who can appreciate that I'm standing out and I can, pre- I can appreciate that they're standing out and say, hey, look at you, I'm here, you're there. And then we begin then to go out in the sense that we begin to engage. We begin to engage and grow and learn from each other. That's how relationships fulfill this, this, um, yeah, this, this uh, appointment, if you may. Now, what's really important that you understand as we move into this conversation is that we are wounded by our primary caretakers, our siblings. And so we are wounded in a relationship by being in relationship with another being. And therefore, the healing must also happen in relationship, which is why ultimately the ultimate purpose of relationships, especially those most intimate relationships with people that we open our hearts to, is for us to heal and to become more whole. Let me say that again. The ultimate purpose of why we come together beyond we think somebody's cute, we like their energy, we like their smile, they have a cute bum, you know, whatever it is, is because ultimately there is something in them that we feel drawn towards. Right, And that thing that draws us towards them is oftentimes the very same thing that we need to heal, incorporate, or make whole within ourselves because that is ultimately the meaning of the word to heal, to make whole. We have a tendency to feel attracted to people who have qualities that we ourselves don't think we have. And the main reason for that is so that you can become more of those qualities that you see in that person. And that includes both positive and negative qualities, okay? So, for example, you found yourself attracting someone um, who is angry. Well, chances are is that you have been repressing your own anger quite a bit. And so this person is coming up in your life, has come to show you about your own anger by them expressing their anger, and probably the part of your anger which you yourself have been repressing or for some reason you believe is, it's bad or it's evil and so forth. So we come into relationships to grow, to heal, and to become more whole. Yes, we come to have fun. Yes, we do. And relationships, as we're about to see, they ultimately are not designed to make us feel good and happy, but they are ultimately designed for us to grow and to heal. One of my favorite teachers, Edgar Tolle, likes to say that relationships are not here to make us happy. They're here to help us wake up. And that's another word for saying to become more whole, to wake up all those aspects of ourselves that we have disowned, denied, we project it out into other people and we think we, we don't have that greatness, that love, that tenderness, or that whatever it is that we feel irresistibly attracted to in another person. So that's why, that's why we come into relationships in the first place. And that's why relationships are ultimately designed for us to experience the multitude of emotions that are part of the human experience, from the highest of the joys to the lowest of the lows. Now, why do relationships end? In my experience, as a professional coach now for the past eight years, and in total about 11 years because I was a minister and a counselor before I became a coach, um, I have come across with primarily three reasons in everyone that I've talked to about why does a relationship come to an end. The first reason, the, the, the most frequent answer that I get to this question about why do relationships come to an end is because people somehow feel disconnected from the other person. When conventional wisdom tells us that the more time we spend with someone, the more we get to know them, you know, the greater the feelings of connection that we're going to have, right? But time and knowledge about the other person is not necessarily what creates that connection. 
because ultimately is our willingness to be vulnerable and real with them that it's the only thing that really really accomplished that so somehow a relationship comes to an end because one of the one of the two parties begins to feel disconnected from the other person the second most common answer is that people feel like the other person's not really there for them it's as if it's as if like the other person doesn't see you like it's not there to validate you um, it's like they're there but they're not really there Okay, and, and surprisingly, in a world that is filled with so many distractions, being fully present for another person really can be a big challenge these days. But that is one of the things that I hear over and over again. Gab, yeah, it's just like I feel my partner is not there. I remember uh, years ago, um, my sister, when she first got married, she was about, she was on her, like her th- second or third year of her marriage. And the biggest complaint she had when she and I sat down to talk about her relationship with her partner was that I just feel like I'm alone in this. Like, like he's not there, like where the, he's there, but he's not really there. I need a partner. I, so, I need someone who's like really present, committed, like that I can count on. So that was my sister's way of expressing pretty much the same sentiment. Now, the third reason that I come across most people have about why a relationship comes to an end is that people want two completely different things. And while it's human to be different and to want different things in life, for a relationship to really last and, and to, yeah, to, to, be, to extend itself out into the future, there needs, there needs to be a clear, specific, and commonly shared vision of what the two people want for that relationship or one with regards to that relationship. And this will apply to pretty much all kinds of relationship, right? Whether if it's a business partner, romantic partner. And, and, and I want to talk to you today from the perspective that even though there might be quite a bit of focus on romantic love, but the principles will apply to pretty much any of your relationships in your, and throughout your life. Now, a few years ago, I did a video, uh, which is available on my YouTube channel and also on my website, about the four levels in which we human beings relate. We relate to each other physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. If you came to one of my, my workshops, one of my seminars, you see me drawing these four quadrants. We relate to people physically through touch when we hug them, right? So through physical touch, uh, sex is one of the ways in which we interact with somebody with a romantic partner or non-romantic partner um, in that way. We also relate to people mentally through expressing our beliefs about the world and our ideas, our our views. We relate to people emotionally through our emotions by being open, vulnerable, allowing them to see inside of us what it is that we're really feeling. And we relate to other people spiritually or think of this as energetically. from a bigger dimension of ourselves to see the, sees the bigger picture of our lives and allows us to have a sense that this person that I'm in a relationship with right now and I came together for a bigger reason. Okay? Now, these are the, the four common areas in which we relate to most people. Now, you're going to notice that throughout your life, you probably have been relating to people in different ways. The majority of us have a tendency to relate primarily. Uh, especially men, at the level of the physical, mental, and the mental aspect. Women have a tendency to, to, um, to communicate more from or to relay from the emotional perspective, obviously of the physical through touch and nurturing. Um, soul, soul, soulmate level relationships or soul level relationships are more of the, the kind of relationship where you have a sense that this you and this other, other person have almost like a mission to accomplish together or a bigger lesson to learn with each other. Now, there's this other aspect of relationships that very few people talk about. And this is what I call the vibrational or energetic aspects of every relationship. In my initial broadcast in Matters of the Heart, I spoke about why the heart matters. And 
refer to how the heart is the center of our vibrational, energetic, or emotional driven uh, consciousness or power, right? Your, vi your, emotional, your vi emotional vibration, which is, emanates from the heart, from a field that emanates from the heart, contains information. That electromagnetic energy that, that, that expands out of your body that sometimes can be felt and experienced um, beyond your body by other people contains information and the other person can literally read that information, may not be able to understand it at a rational mental level, but can read it. And but because it's primarily controlled by magnetic energy, remember it's electromagnetic energy, magnetic energy will either push the other person away or draw them towards you because that's what magnets do. It will either attract you or, uh, or push you away from the other person. Have you ever felt, for example, in a relationship, like with someone that you love, where suddenly you're not even speaking for whatever reason, um, but you walk into the room and you immediately feel like there's something off. You haven't even looked at their face or maybe you just caught a glimpse of their eye and you just know instantly either that there's something wrong with that person, that they're off, or you know that is not the right time to approach them to have the conversation that you wanted to have. Have you ever felt like that? Well, I do feel like that quite often. And it's a skill that I developed as a child growing up in a home where for, for, for in many occasions, I did not feel safe, right? Because there was a lot of conflict and there was a lot of, um, yeah, there was a lot of anger that was being expressed by both my parents and my mom, especially during that period when they were getting divorced. So I want you, I want you to think that there's this emotional, vibrational level of relationships which contains information, right, which we are interacting with, with another all the time. And it is when these two vibrational levels are in alignment that the relationship appears to go and flow and feel good and it kind of gets get you get a sense that you feel very connected to the other person and it's that kind of a sense of a flow that you have with the other person where you complete each other's sentences where you know when the other person is thinking it's almost like a sense of alignment um, or coherence if you may all right and it is primarily power and driven by the energy and the electromagnetism of your heart your heart generates a beat, your heart generates a frequency, that frequency is information, and it literally is like music. So I want to offer you right now, at this point of our conversation, a metaphor for relationships, okay? And tell me what you think about this. If you begin to understand that we are vibrational beings, we are beyond physical, mental, emotional, spiritual beings, we're also vibrational beings. And that a good part of being in relationship with another being is about the, the, um, the energetic dance of these vibrations, right? Which are currents of energy, basically. You know, what if you began to see yourself and your partner as two dance partners who are dancing together to a particular song? Two dance partners who are dancing together to a particular song. Now, if this is how we begin to see our engagements, our relationships, right? Of all kinds of relationships, right? Remember there's romantic music, there is suspense, thrilling kind of music, there's classical music, there is playful music, there's very sad music. And so as you allow yourself to do the dance of a relationship with a particular song, and now have a partner. And one of three things happen. One of the partner decides that they don't want to dance anymore. They don't want to dance. Or they decide that they want to dance to a different song. Or they decide that they don't want that partner anymore to dance the dance for that song. Or maybe one of the, one of the partners uh, begins to feel uh, like he or she has upskilled the other partner 
and wants to change another partner or wants to dance a different kind of dance and wants to dance to a different song. You see where I'm getting at? You see why this is going to become so, so um, complex? So what I'm getting at is, yes, relationships do come to an end because just like partners dancing to a particular song, we human beings, we are in constant change. Is the, is the constant in life, change. And if relationships are here to help us grow, to heal, to transform, to learn more about ourselves and to become more whole, doesn't it make sense that we then are constantly having to change the dance, having to change the song, having to change the rhythm of the dance? And as a result, the person that we have been engaging with up until now may no longer be a good fit for either the dance or the song that we're choosing to dance to. See what I mean? So if you look at it from the perspective, you, it allows you then to begin to distance yourself and realize that ultimately, it's not that there's anything wrong with you. The relationship is not coming to an end because there's something wrong with you or something with the other partner. It's just simply there has been an energetic vibrational shift in you, in the other person, in the dance itself, in the song that's being played that requires you to either grow in a new direction or develop a new set of skills, get on with the program, get on with the flow, get on with the song, or simply choose a different partner or choose to learn how to dance by yourself for a while and then choosing what kind of dance and what kind of song that you want to have. I know I'm speaking very meta metaphorically, but that's the intention, right? I want to help you bypass the conditioning of your mind and help to or invite you to look at things from a slightly different perspective. Relationships ultimately come to an end, I believe, is because at some level, something that was in alignment, two partners who wanted to dance the same dance to the same song, in the same time and space and space for either an internal reason, an external reason that could be the other partner or the dance, the dynamic of the dance changing or the song that's being played changing, right? Has now created a misalignment in the two partners, a misalignment, which will then lead me to say physically, mm, I don't feel the chemistry between us anymore. Remember that this thing that we call chemistry ultimately is actually power and governed by an emotion, which are hormones, which are also vibrationally influenced, right? Um, notice that when there's a shift in electromagnetism of your heart and your heart is vibrating at the frequency of 0 0.1 hertz, that immediately generates the hormone of cytosine. And so what do you feel? Well, you feel like hugging people. It's the, it's the hormone of bonding. And it happens once you reach that level of vibration, right? So the vibrational level will have an impact on your emotions and literally in your body chemistry. That's it's the, it's the essence of what emotions are. They're literally biochemicals, all right? So that will also be experienced mentally because when you shift how you feel, suddenly your view on things change. That will affect you, obviously, emotionally. This is the realm of the heart and will also affect you spiritually from the perspective of you will begin to get a sense of, see, the dance and the song. It's, what, are, what is our relationship about? What is it that we're both wanting? Right? Perhaps when, when you began this relationship, you did not give yourself permission to really be truly yourself. Real, absolutely real with the other person. Now, as the, as the dance began, you know, you and your partner began to become aware of all those areas um, where the relationship or the dance was, um, was not based on a reality. Think, for example, you know, using the same metaphor of, of the dance and the song. Like imagine, for example, if you're like a really, sh you're a really short person, right? And so you have like these high heels um, to lift you up. And so you made your partner believe that you were taller 
you know, better whatever than, than, you know, than you had, than you really were. And then suddenly as you begin to dance together, you know, your partner begins to notice that you're actually a lot shorter, that that is not the real true you. And so as a result, you then begin to feel some shame and you begin to pull away or your partner begins to criticize you or you begin to criticize the partner. And so what begins to happen is this sense of common shared dance and song that we began to dance with begins to be affected by all these emotions, by all of these different aspects of ourselves, which again will eventually end up translating into a shift in the vibration which will then will lead to a misalignment. So what can you do? What can you do? Because ultimately that's what you're here for, right? You are not wanting to know just why your relationship came to an end, right? You will look at it from different perspective. My partner wants something different. I want something different. We don't have body chemistry. We want different things. He likes somebody else that's better, that's shorter, that's cuter, that's younger right? Uh, I want to be alone. I feel hurt. I don't understand my feelings. Uh, everything hurts. Uh, I need to protect myself. You know, whatever it is, it will be at the level of the mind. The mind will try to come up with a million and one reasons why the relationship is coming to an end. And the truth is that you will never ultimately be satisfied because when, when I'm stuck at the level of the mind, there will always be a new reason today's reason, tomorrow's reason, the next day's reason as to why the relationship came to an end. He did this, she did this, I did that, we did this. I don't know why, you know, maybe God did this, you know. But the truth is that when you, when you let go of, of all these reasons which are at the level of the mind again, you know, and begin to really get down into the energetics, the vibrational aspects of a relationship, what has really happened is there has been a shift, an energetic vibrational shift in you, in the other person, in the relationship, in the dance, or in the song, the direction in which we're going. And that will ultimately have an impact, which will then lead you to either look inwardly and see what are the, the skills that you need to develop, or choose a completely different partner, um, or, or work with your partner to actually develop those new skills that are required for the new song and the new dance that you're now being asked to learn how to dance. And that is what I believe is the majority, the majority of the cases I work with. So it's, it's, it's almost as if the people really love each other, but somehow for them to, to, to continue the relationship, they're going to have to start relating to each other from a much more real, present, compassionate, loving place than they were before, you know? And I think a lot of it has to do with the times in which we're living, in which literally we are all being asked to become the more loving, more joyful, more compassionate, more forgiving versions of ourselves. Certainly when you look at the news, when you look at what's happening in the world of politics, you know, you can see that uh, we are literally being manipulated by fear. We're manipulated um, in the media by fear. And, and that begins to interfere in a lot of our relationships. Okay? It begins to affect how we see our worlds. And, and therefore, the shift that's really, that's really or, or the battle really needs to happen within our own hearts. What I mean by that is we need to begin to own back our, what my friend Jennifer calls our energetic sovereignty. I call that our emotional sovereignty or become masters of our own emotions, right? So that then we can literally upgrade our vibrational frequency and begin to bring that into our relationships. And the moment you do that, trust me, your relationship will begin to flow and miracles of healing will begin to take place. So what are some of the things that you can do if you are experiencing a relationship that, as we have been describing, coming to an end, is experiencing a shift of some sort. Well, I want to share with you 12 things that you can do. Um, that if you start applying what you're learning here today, what I'm sharing with you today, it will have a very big impact in how you relate to others and in the quality of your relationships. 
I want to use, I want to, I'm going to first share six things that you'll need to surrender and six things that you'll need to embrace. Okay. So hold on to your heart and allow me as I guide you through these 12 specific items, right? Allow them to land, to land and be a reflection point through which you can look at your current relationship challenges. The first thing that you can do if you're experiencing a huge shift in your relationship is number one, surrender the blame. Stop blaming the other person. Stop blaming your dance partner for everything that's wrong with the relationship, everything that's not happening, everything, everything that he or she is making you feel and begin to take responsibility for yourself. That is where the journey begins. The moment you start seeing yourself as the victim of the other person or the situation or the relationship or the third party that is breaking you up or whatever and begin to embrace the possibility that somehow you have contributed, allowed, or collaborated, or participated in what is going on or what, what is leading to this relationship, whether consciously or unconsciously. Begin to let go, let other people off the hook, and begin to stop blaming other people. And the way you're going to do that is by taking responsibility. You know, the word responsibility means to, it's the ability to respond, right? So instead of reacting to your partner and what he or she says or what he or did or did not do or every emotion that gets triggered on you, every anger, every fear, whatever. Instead, begin to respond. Begin to respond. From where? From a more loving aspect of yourself, from a more conscious aspect of yourself. The second thing that you need to surrender is the fear. Right? The fear. The fear of what? Well, for the majority of us, when it comes to relationships, it's always going to be the fear of losing the other person. The ultimate fear. And you might be saying, well, Gab, how am I going to do that? Well, the truth is that sooner or later, you will lose that relationship in its physical form. You know, we human beings, we came to this, to this planet alone and we'll be here in relationship with each other, but we will leave alone. Sooner or later, we will leave and lose everyone in our lives. So one of the things that you need to start learning how to do is just surrendering the fear. And one of the ways I do that in my own personal relationships is by using my creative imagination, by actually imagining that I'm losing that person or that I've lost that person. And of course, the moment I do that, you know, it triggers a tremendous amount of grief and sadness, but that's the space that you're invited to go. Because here's the thing, if it's fear what's keeping you attached or in relationship with another person, then it's not going to be love. You are with somebody because at some level you're afraid that that's the best you're going to do. You're afraid to be alone. And then so you will have a tendency then to tolerate um, situations that you normally would not simply because, you know, is that kind of thing that is that kind of belief that says sort of like, well, I'd rather have somebody that beats me up than no one at all. And so I will then tolerate situations that are, are, that are unloving, that are not nurturing, that are supportive just because deep down I'm afraid to be alone. So surrender the fear. In fact, imagine Give for a fact that you're going to lose that person anyway. And then give yourself permission to actually to grieve the loss. Even though the relationship may be resurrected and will come around, but be willing to face that fear and imagine losing that relationship. Because eventually you will. Everything in this life is temporary. The third thing you need to surrender is your anger, your resentment. Right? especially that kind of resentment that builds up over years of giving and giving and giving and giving. Oftentimes, you know, the, one of the reasons a lot of relationships end is because there's a big imbalance that's also part of the misalignment that, I, that I've been speaking about. You know, something that is misalignment is where there is, a, where there is a, an imbalance between giving and receiving. Relationships are meant to be a vessel 
where there's balance between the two. So oftentimes when you're the person that is giving, 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 oftentimes that giving comes with a certain set of expectations. And then as a result of the person not reciprocating or not giving back in the way that you thought they needed to, you start building up some resentment. So what do you do? You surrender the anger. You begin to see whatever it is that you have given that person as a gift. Yeah. And then you give yourself permission to feel the anger and you allow this resentment to literally be forgiven away. And you begin to see what you do for that person or people in your life as gifts. The fourth thing you need to surrender is your pride, which is your need to be right. You need to have it your own way. You know, oftentimes the majority of us want, would much rather be um, right than happy. So oftentimes we hold on to positions, you know, she's right, I'm wrong, or right, or vice versa. You know, um, why couldn't she do it my way? Why couldn't she or he see it my way? You know, and then as a result, we just stay in our heads, right? We don't really see the other person's perspective. And then as a result, we get stuck. We get stuck. So surrender the pride. The fifth thing you need to surrender is your expectations, as I was speaking, you know, earlier. And what I mean by that is the majority of us have a tendency when we begin a relationship to right there and then decide what this relationship is going to be about and how it's going to be, right? We have a tendency to do that, to project ourselves into the future. It's an important aspect of every relationship because it gives us something to look forward to. But at the same time, it takes us out of the present moment and allows us and it stops us from being in the flow of what the relationship is really trying to teach us. So you need to let go of everything that you decide you decided this relationship was going to be about, is and will be. You have to let that go. And then six, you need to also, this kind of this is an extension of this previous one. The sixth, the sixth thing you need to surrender is the control which is the need to want to fix yourself, the other person, or even the relationship. You know, there's nothing and no one to fix. You must understand that ultimately the person that you've been in a relationship with is another human being just like you who is doing the best that they can, right, with what they know, with their current level of awareness at this moment. So let go of the control. And instead of taking control of the relationship of the other person, bring Bring the attention back to you to begin to take responsibility for you, all right? This takes us now into the other list of six things that you need to start now embracing. Number one, embrace the truth of what it is that you had been feeling about your relationship or in your relationship that you had not had the courage to admit to yourself and begin to see the relationship as it really is, or as it was before it came to an end, right? Not as you imagine it to be, not as it could have been, but as it really was. You know, you're going to notice that we have a tendency to, to roman, it was called, uh, romantizar, uh, to um, uh, romanticize the, our relationship, especially the past, right? Ah, oh, the old days, they were so good, they were so beautiful. When the truth is, when you really bring yourself back out there, you may realize, like, no, it actually wasn't that, that great. I was feeling alone. I was feeling unheard, right? Sure, there may, have made, there may have been some really good moments in the relationship. I'm not denying that there may have not been good moments in the relationship, but we have a tendency to just focus on those one, two moments and then to forget about the pain that we were in, the disconnection, right? The misaligned that we were. All right, so give yourself permission to, to really sit with the truth, the ultimate truth about your relationship. See, begin to see the other human being again with their, with their faults, with their imperfections, which is what makes us human, which is probably one of the reasons we came to be in a relationship together in the first place. The second thing that you need to embrace is the feelings that you have been repressing with regards to the relationship changing, shifting, ending. So can you be willing or are you willing to feel the loss, the grief, 
the sadness, the guilt. Guilt is one of the big ones that comes in, especially at the end of a relationship where you begin to experience not just a sense of emptiness and a bit of anxiety in your stomach, but thoughts that will say to you, I could have done better. I should have done this. I should have said this. I should have, I should have, I should have, I should have, I should have. You know, notice that guilt is probably one of the most egocentric of all emotions because it's all about me. I could have, I should have, I should have. And so it's not really about the other person. It's all about you. So embrace them. Um, and the only reason you're embracing them so that ultimately they can be expressed and surrender because that is the nature of feelings. See, the problem is never really the feelings in themselves. The problem is when we, in an attempt not to feel the pain, not to experience the emotional discomfort, we numb our pain. Um, we stay in our pride. We repress our feelings, our emotions by engaging in addictions, habits, food, sex, pornography, you know, gambling, social media, whatever. Anything so that we don't have to feel our pain. Begin to feel the pain. It is part, it is part of human being. And not only that, it is part of the journey of healing. It is part of the journey of becoming more whole. You know, I've noticed that my goodness, if I tell you how many times I, I, I've broken my own heart, you know, because I'm now these days, I don't even use the expression anymore. Somebody broke my heart. And now I use the expression, ah, uh, I've broken my own heart. Because when I think about it, I did. I was the one that allowed myself to open my heart so much. And the truth is that every time any of us open our hearts to someone, um, we become a likely candidate to have our hearts broken. You know, one of my teachers and mentors like to say that you know, there's no such a thing ultimately as a broken heart, it's just a heart that is getting ready to open more. And that I found is all, the ultimate truth about every, every heartbreak I've ever had. It has allowed me to rise up to a new level of love, to have a deeper sense of love and compassion for myself, for the other person, and then ultimately a deeper connection with the divine. It's the more, the more heartbreaks I have is like the closer I grow to God. It's, it's, uh, it's funny how it's built in, isn't it? You know, it's a paradox, but it seems to be working in that sense. The fourth thing that you need to embrace is, um, oh, sorry, the third one. The third uh, thing that you need to embrace is the ultimate truth that you and only you are responsible for yourself, for your feelings, for your needs, for having those needs met. Only you are responsible for your desires, for your wants, for being happy. You can't expect your partner, your friend, your bit, to, whoever, you can't expect them to be the person that's going to give that to you. Mm. That is your primary responsibility. In fact, it is your responsibility to bring that into the relationship to bring the love, the joy, the compassion, all these things, right? Remember, it, it is in the giving that we receive, right? Isn't that, isn't that what St. Francis and the very famous prayer ultimately taught us? So it is for you and your only responsibility to express your truth, to ask for what I want, to let other people know what you feel, what you think, what you want, what the desire, only you. You know, you cannot expect your partner or the other person to know what it is that you're thinking, feeling, sensing, wanting, desiring, because they, are, they don't have a crystal ball, right? You cannot expect them to know, especially when they say, how are you? And you say, I'm okay. When the truth is, you're not okay. All right, so you need to start embracing that sense of self-responsibility. That's what ultimately emotional mastery is all about. You need to also start embracing the desire and the longing for something different. That there's a part of you that is wanting and desiring a new way of relating to others, to be in a different kind of relationship, starting with the relationship that you have with yourself. That within you, there is an emerging vision of the kind of relationships that you know you're being asked to step into what's coming up next for your life. You know, that is what allows you ultimately to, to move beyond a relationship that has come to an end and then move into the new space, almost like when you move to a new house, and then look back and say, oh my God, 
I don't know why did I ever see this guy and this girl, you know, whatever. I don't know why I was there. It's almost like when you were, when I was living in a, you know, in a tiny little uh, studio apartment in LA and then I moved to a big house. I was like, oh my God, I can't, I don't know how I lived there for four years. Yet I did. Yes, I did. So oftentimes our relationships, you know, they are, they are literally showing up as a mirror of to how we are relating to ourselves. So as you grow and transform, which again, it's an energetic vibrational shift, as that changes, you know, you become misaligned with the current person and you're, you're ready for the next lesson. You're ready for the next teacher, which brings me to the next point. The fifth thing you need to surrender, sorry, to embrace is that there are lessons to be learned, that every relationship is teaching you about yourself. Okay, We are each other's mirrors reflecting what we like about ourselves and what we don't like about ourselves. And the only thing that would really get us through this process is the compassion, the forgiveness, the understanding that we can give ourselves and the other person by expressing this aspect or these virtues of the heart. And then last, the last thing, the sixth thing you need to embrace is that the ultimate truth, and this is the ultimate truth, is that you are lovable that you are worthy of love no matter what, that you have a God-given divine right to be happy and to be in a relationship with someone who loves, honors, and appreciates you, a relationship that is an expression of the love that your creator, that your father and mother God has for you, that you are worthy of it. Right? Just for being you, that you have nothing to prove to another person. You have nothing to prove to you. You have nothing to prove to God. Because in our Father's image and likeness in which we were made, we already are. In essence, sure, we are little children growing, learning lessons, making mistakes along the way. But it never, at no point, is the love withdrawn because of these imperfections. Quite the opposite. We have a heavenly, heavenly Father who, by means of our heart connection, is constantly urging us forward and up, just like a parent does when a child is learning how to walk. That despite whatever happened to you in the past, whatever mistakes you have made, whatever wrong may have been committed against you, it is the power of this divine love that we access through our heart connection that can ultimately heal us, transform us, and then raise our vibrational frequency so that we can then become more love, allow more love in, and therefore then begin to see or experience the world of our relationships mirroring back to us the love that God has for us and the love that we're now expressing towards ourselves. We spoke about the metaphor of the dancing partners, the dance and the song. So I want to, I want to leave you with this, this invitation. What if you right now, what if right now you could take full ownership of your life? Take full ownership of every one of your relationships, especially those ones that have been causing you the most pain, that are bringing up the most emotional discomfort in you, that's bringing it, that are bringing out your biggest fears, um, anger, resentment, anxiety, all of that. What if you could just choose to bring those people into your heart, Right? Grant them all immunity. That's the essence of what agape or unconditional love is. And as you allow yourself to rise, rise beyond your current level of being, of fear, shame, anger, resentment, whatever it is, begin to rise into a new perspective from that space. You and you alone in the privacy of your own heart and on just between you and your God, you begin to design what kind of music it is that you want to dance, what kind of partner you want to have, and what kind of dance you want to be in. As you start having these conversations in the privacy of your own heart and begin to not only own your capacity to be this love, to have this love, to have this love mirror towards you, 
I tell you, miracles of healing will begin to happen in your relationships. Perhaps you'll leave this relationship that you're in right now that you've been afraid to leave and then simply just feel a deep sense of love and appreciation for your partner and be able to release them and say, hey, I release you into the unconditional loving heart of God knowing that you're free and I'm free to choose. Yeah, to choose love. What if you could do that? What if you could love yourself, trust life this much? What if you could do that? Well, I want to move us away from the what if to the space of you can. You are capable. And with that, I want to invite you to just close your eyes for moments and place your hand in your heart once again. And as you breathe in and out of the heart, I want you to repeat with me the following affirmations. I am the image and the likeness of love. I am love personified as me. The Christ in me is worthy. Worthy of love, abundance, and success. I have nothing to prove to others. I have nothing to prove to myself. I have nothing to prove to God. I am lovable just as I am. I know this is the truth of who you are. I know this is the truth inside your heart. And in the name of the I am presence, our holy Christ self, the Holy Spirit, the divine mother Mary, and all divine beings and teachers of love, we declare this the truth inside our hearts. And it is so. And so it is. Hmm. All right, my beautiful hearts, we're coming to the end of our time together. We have come to the end of our show, actually. I hope that um, what you have learned or remember here today will support you along your journey of creating deeper, more loving, intimate relationships, all areas of your life. Please remember that there is no such thing as mind over matters of the heart. Because your heart is ultimately your inner center of love, wisdom, and power that is available within you at any given time. I also want to remind you in case you've been, um, yeah, you've been following my previous podcast that um, in August 2nd, which is next week, Thursday, I'll be launching a new course entitled The Path to Soulmate Love. It's a process I've been teaching for the past few years already. Um, to people who are interested in attracting and creating a soulmate level relationship using the vibrational power of their heart. So if any of you are interested in joining me on this journey, you can find out more about this upcoming course at my website, heartintelligencecoach.com forward slash soulmate love. Once again, thank you very much for lending me your heart, um, for your willingness to hang out during this special hour with me. And until we meet again, I send you all of my love. Thank you very much again for your wonderful comments that you left me. Uh, I noticed there were some questions that came in at the end, but unfortunately I don't have time to get to them right now. So once again, thank you very much for being here with me. And I send you all of my love. Bye-bye for now.